I love Australia. I think we live in one of the most beautiful places in the whole entire world. While I'm driving, I sing songs that you would not expect a truck driver to sing. <laughs> More like Katy Perry, Taylor Swift. People call me on the radio as Emco. Emco here. But I do have another name, Roadrunner, because I would never let anything get in my way. My generation is one of the last generations to be driving diesel trucks. By my late 20s, all trucks will be hydrogen powered. It's sad to say, but Australia is one of the highest producers of CO2 per capita on the planet. And that's also because we're sparsely populated and spread apart. We have to travel long distances in order to get to where we need to go. One of the first things that you might... Australia is in the front line of the climate crisis. We've had back-to-back -back years of either bushfires followed by massive floods across this country. So we have got to solve this problem. We need to transition from the old ways of burning coal and can generate new clean forms of energy. Step number one is to build up a lot more renewable energy. Step number two is to start producing a lot more hydrogen. I guess to be an Australian is a unique sort of nationality. We're like an island, away from the rest of the world. We feel like we're isolated, but at the same time, together. I've always been an outdoor person. I love the outdoors. Turned out that my father-in-law had a farm not far from here, and, you know, had all sorts of animals on there in, in that 30 years. So the connection to the land is there. I'm in the health, safety, environment field, in the construction industry worked on Talawara A was my first opportunity to work on a power station. So the Talawara used to have a coal-fired power station. And then it got decommissioned in the 80s and then rebuilt again in the late 90s. They put it a gas-fired combined cycle power station known as Talawara A, of which I had the privilege to work on. Now I've come back and working on Talawara B, being on the construction project. It's gonna be a open cycle, hydrogen capable, gas turbine, and I think that diversity will bring stability to the grid. I am 20 years old. My grandfather was a truck driver. I have been around trucks from a very young age, and I remember always sitting in the truck with him as a kid, and they're such vivid memories. And one night I was laying in bed, and I was like, I'm gonna go get my truck license. And I think a lot more men are now accepting that this is a changing industry and there are a lot more girls in it now than there was years ago. In Australia, we've historically relied on coal for most of our electricity, but obviously we can't continue if we're aiming for a net zero by 2050. When people argue that we can change our energy system overnight, what they're not realising is that well, just the scale of what's involved. That means that we need it, basically, we need to switch off the coal-fired power plants. We need something to replace it by. Maybe the best replacement for it is hydro. There's only a limited amount of hydropower that we can build. Solar, it's only available during daylight hours. And this is one of the places we see for hydrogen in the future. It's a store of energy for the electricity grid. So when we talk about hydrogen, it's a clean fuel because when we burn it, we're basically producing water and no CO2. So Talawara B, it's local gas, so most of it's coming down from the, down south. Being a hydrogen capable power station allows for you know, hydrogen to be blended in with natural gas. That's the first one in Australia. 
working on a project such as Talawara B it gives me that sense of pride. It's almost like a public service, building something that will provide the greater community with electricity and, and something that we need. I transport scrap metal. So my job as a truck driver is actually part of a circular economy. I travel from Wollongong all the way up to Newcastle. I go across the Hawkesbury River and down the Mooning Mooney Bridge. It is up hills, down hills, bends. It's a really challenging drive. There are interstate drivers who drive from Sydney to Perth which is about 5,000 kilometres, about the same distance from London to Moscow. Fuel is skyrocketing in price, especially this product we use called AdBlue, which breaks down all the burnt diesel for anti-pollution. So let's think about hydrogen and its role in transportation. So things like long haul trucking, they don't want to waste the time charging up those vehicles. And so this is where hydrogen can have a role. To expand Australia's hydrogen capacity, we also need a network of things like refueling stations for heavy vehicle transport. We need infrastructure for compressing hydrogen into liquid hydrogen. And this is hopefully what the hydrogen hubs are going to help us with as well. Talawa B provides us a way of decarbonise our electricity generation. But at the same time, it also helps kickstart this industry as well to hopefully make Australia one of the world's leaders in hydrogen production and maybe even export. It's a journey, particularly in the Illawarra, just these things aren't built overnight. Actually getting environmental licence that has like multiple sub-plans for emissions to air, water, noise, cultural heritage, traffic management. It's a couple of years of planning and permitting and then you move into the construction phase. This is an important project. I'm really determined to see the end of this, get this thing fired up and pumping electricity into the grid. Well, one of the best things for me about my job is seeing little tiny kids, and sometimes they'll stand on the side of the road and they're going like this, like telling me to pull the horn. Oh, look at the kids. <laughs> I saw a little girl the other day that was sitting in the car and she just looked up through the window of my truck and her eyes were lit up. Seeing the change in this industry, it means a lot to me because I did this to not only prove to myself, but to prove to not even females, but other young people that they, they can do it. I think I'm definitely interested to see what happens with hydrogen powered trucks. Throughout Australia's history, we've overcome by embracing innovation through hard work. How do we transition from where we are now to a decarbonised future? So we're seeing the costs of hydrogen production fall really rapidly. We will get to cheaper hydrogen when we get to larger economies of scale. When we think about Australia, when we think about the history of Sydney Harbour, we see that it's a history of changes. Changes in the way we use the harbour and the way that we move across the harbour. Even something as simple as the Manly Ferry. We go from the days of steamships into diesel-powered ferries, and even now we're thinking about electric-powered ferries in the harbour. I'm looking forward to a future which is sustainable, in which we travel across the harbour with boats that are powered by hydrogen. I think this offers a great challenge to Australia, but it also offers a great promise to us.